and we are back hello welcome to the last video in this online skill course object photogrammetry for archaeology in this last video we're gonna talk about exporting options of your model uh, how do you export what kind of formats do you have uh, what kind of other options do you still have so basically uh, we go back to our So we will go back to Metashape uh, and at this moment we have quite a heavy 3D model. It is uh, based on frame. you see how dense it is? That means it's a lot of data. It means it's hard to visualize. It means uh, it, is, uh, it becomes a relatively big file even though this is still manageable. Uh, Preferably if you share a model like this in online resources or if you're going to use it in some kind of uh, visualization, you want to have it as um, you want to have it uh, lighter. However, if you want to store it in some kind of object database in which uh, all the object from an excavation or from an inventory from the museum are scanned in high detail, uh, then of course you want to have this high detail. Uh, so there are a couple of, uh, well, there's one important option, at least, that you can do before you export it. Uh, we're going to copy, duplicate this one, and we only need to model, basically, because we're going to work with the model. Uh, and then... If we're going to want to make a lower resolution version of this model, we go to Tools, Mesh, and then Decimate Mesh. And Decimate, here you can basically say like how large or what the, uh, the number of faces that should be in your meshes. The higher number of faces, the higher the resolution of your mesh, the, the heavier your model. But we can say, okay, we want to put this on our website, it we want to have people to load it fast uh, we make it to uh, 50,000 uh, 50,000 faces say ok you can see uh, how this mesh was decimated into a much lighter version however now the texture is gone so we have to re calculate the texture so you use workflow and build texture I leave you to this so we finished we have now a high resolution texture texture with good detail on a relatively low resolution mesh although the mesh is still fine it's still uh, represents the original shape of the object very well only some details are out you, you can even see the groove still a little bit anyway we have now uh, a nice model that we can export so what kind of uh, possibilities do you have when exporting so export of course you can export also the points you can export a whole lot of other things, but we want to export the model. And then you have this entire list of different 3D model formats. Um, so uh, one that is used a lot that is on top is the OBJ uh, farm format. Uh, also the Colada DAE format is used a lot. Uh, all these different formats have different capabilities so for instance the FBX format is used in uh, gaming and 3d modeling uh, uh, industries a lot because it can also contain animations and um, all kinds of more complex and additional 3d uh, 3d data an OBA file is a relatively very simple file uh, you have not so many options although you do have the option of changing materials 
uh, it of course has the option of uh, uh, presenting uh, or displaying the texture. Um, so for basic sharing of mo of uh, of models, uh, the OBJ format is uh, pretty good. Um, so when you exported this, and actually in the provide data set is already an exported model, you can see uh, this is the OBJ file, and the OBJ file comes also with a JPEG, and the JPEG in fact represents the texture. So this is the combined are the combined photos basically of the of the vessel that are projected back on it in this way. Uh, and in fact there's also an MTL file that's a material file and here the material properties are defined. So the things like how reflective it is you can define here. Uh, how this works you can find on the internet. It goes a bit too far to go into this uh, right now. But you can also see it one of the materials, it has two materials basically, and one of the materials refers to this texture. And this is very important because in this material file the reference to the texture is stored. And if the texture is gone it loses the reference to the texture because it doesn't know where it is. And then when you open the file, you won't see the color information, but you will only see the object. So what can we do with this object? Well, uh, of course, the OBJ file is a universally read uh, file format, like all 3D, uh, uh, 3D viewer and uh, other kind of 3D modeling software opens this. So for instance, MeshLab is a very nice, uh, open source uh, 3D uh, 3D processing or mesh processing program it's also very useful for mesh visualization uh, there's all kinds of things you can do here but you can simply open this by file import mesh and um, yeah and you have various options here so you can also change the lighting in fact uh, you can simply open it in uh, the Windows 3D viewer that uh, comes uh, with all versions of Windows nowadays. Well, you can do all kinds of little things here. But of course you can also share it online. Um, Sketchfab is one of the, like, probably the biggest uh, 3D model sharing website. And actually, this Kiatos is also on the Sketchfab page of the Alert Pearson I advise you to look at Sketchfab. It has a very nice collection of all kinds of 3D models uh, and also quite a lot of archaeological 3D models. So, this was basically it. Uh, this was the last video in this online course. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned it, and I hope you uh, continue, uh, continue learning photogrammetry. And uh, thank you for paying attention, and see you next time.